to a good day, everyone. Welcome. Um, well, I know, I, I, I know what they've done actually. Um, 
I was there. Um, so I think, yeah, it's um, it's sort of because their energies were slightly different. It, it was uh, it was creatively quite rewarding for me. It was good. I'm excited about it. And also, like I've done that. Like people worry about that. They worry about the part changing and all that. But because I did Doctor Who, I guess, and you guys are all Doctor Who fans, we used to it, aren't we? It happens. Change is a good thing, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I've never watched the talk, sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ah, yes, the green box. Your question. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Hi. Uh, if the doctor traveled to Westeros and met Damon, how would they react to each other? <laughs> That's a very good question. I think the doctor would whip Damon into shape, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think he'd eat him for breakfast, really. I think he'd, you know, he'd be like, look, mate, just calm down. Stop being so cross about everything. Come in the TARDIS. I'll take you on an adventure. We'll have a great time. And I'll show you something else. And I think... Yeah, I think I think the doctor would be quite a good influence on Damon. I think he'd I don't know, I, yeah, he'd just be a good, calming, brilliant doctory influence, I think. And I think I think Damon would quite like the doctor. Thank you, and have a great visit to Brussels. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> the pink microphone, where did it go? Pink microphone, please stand up. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, hello, I hope you're having a great time here. I am. <laughs> well, my question is, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it's been Damon and Rinya, but please, you tell me. I mean, look, it's pretty weird. Um, <laughs> but that's what happens in Westeros. That's what happens with the Targaryen clan. They are pretty weird, and Damon is... Damon. <laughs> so... Um, you know, he's, he's got a sort of intrinsic, strange... It's like they've got an umbilical cord that's attached to him in some strange way. I mean, what do you think? Weirds you out? Um, at first it was weird, but maybe now... <laughs> <laughs> we will see okay. it in a few episodes. Interesting. Thanks. Interesting. Well, we, we've seen weirder things in uh, Game of Thrones, of course. Yeah, too. well, exactly. <laughs> That, that was the result of the strange relationships 300 years later. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. Really weird stuff comes out. The blue microphone, or the green one, I don't know the color. Please stand up if you have the blue or green microphone. Oh, it's still traveling up there. There it goes. Where are we? Blue box, spinning around, bigger on the inside. <laughs> Let's move to the pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Pink microphone over there. Ah, yes, right down the front. Hello. Hello. Since I'm just in front of you, anyway. you look very smart, by the way. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you very much. Okay, so my question, as a young actor, is: What is the best advice you could give to me? As a young actor, yes. Well, first, you're doing a good job because you look brilliant. So that's something. Um, I think. Look, I think it's a tough one. You've got to read as much as you can, make as much as you can. Try and be involved at any level. It doesn't really matter what level it is. Don't worry if it's a school play or a play at work that someone's putting on or something in your local community. Just get involved and get out there and practice and sharpen your tools and work at your craft on a daily basis like you would if you were an athlete. And, that, and so therefore it means it's about consuming as much material as possible. Plays and different forms and nowadays you can make so much you can make something on your iPhone you can you know uh, it's easy to get content out into the world and um, then just never give up never give up definitely I mean I've already made my thing on social networks but I mean I want to be on the screen someday so oh, yeah. I look forward to seeing you there <laughs> what's your name? I'm Jonathan Jonathan what's yours? No. <laughs> Have a great stay in Belgium, man. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And we have the blue box over there, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I can't believe this. 
I, 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 hang on, it's like a voice from the gods. Where are they? Oh, there you are. Here, here, here. Yeah. Voice yeah. from the gods, yes. Um, I, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, um, how does it feel to be in in this this show? Like, how does it feel to to be in in the world of Westeros? Like, what is that? What does that do to you? Well, um, well, look, I, I feel very proud to be to be part of this world and, and to be part of the legacy that all of the other actors in Game of Thrones started um, and that George has created. Uh, I think it's a very interesting world. I think it's a very brutal world. I think it's good for my imagination. You know, I'm entertained. But the truth is, it's a really tough show to make. And it, um, it's gruelling, and it's a long shoot. We shot for like 13 months. So, it was tough, but yeah, it feels good, man. Feels... All right, cool. I, nice. I cannot believe I'm here. Uh, thanks. My pleasure, man. Have a good day. You, yes, definitely, you definitely are here. We can all confirm. So, <laughs> that is... So, uh, I was wondering, we've seen a few making-offs of uh, Game of Thrones. A lot yeah. of green key and things around. How is it on set? Do you are you really in this fantasy world, or is it just when it's finished? Yeah, I mean, like the Red Keep is like it's like a whole world. They've built a whole. It's like a huge castle, really, and there's like bedrooms in it and top floors. It's like three studios. It's enormous. Great. And then um, a lot of the sets are practical, really. Yeah. And then we go to Spain and Portugal and stuff. And there's some green stuff. Obviously, the dragons are green. But even that, they build like a huge big plinth, and it's like 20 foot in the air. And you're on this, what is like a bucking bronco, essentially. And there's a guy with a remote control who like moves you around. And you're like, <laughs> That's a cool job, being the remote control of a dragon. It is. I would want that. Yeah, so. I know, I'd want that, yeah. yeah. Pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Pink oh, microphone. Ah, oh, at the front. Sabrina. Yeah. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Um, my question is, if you could take the TARDIS and go back in time, what advice would you give to your 10 year old self? <laughs> what advice would I give to my 10 year old self? Blimey. Um, look, oh God, don't sweat the small stuff. Um, what advice would I give to my. I mean, actually, let me ask you that question because it's such a good question. What advice would you give to your 10 year old self? It's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for asking. Does does anyone know the answer? I'm struggling with that one. What would you? Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah. Be your guest. Be your guest. I love that. Film. Be your guest. Um, yeah. Don't sweat the small stuff. Work really hard. Never give up. I don't know. Enjoy it. We're only here once, aren't we? And um, yeah. Watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Also, Matt, it is my cousin's birthday today, and she loves you, and I was wondering if you could say happy birthday to her. Her name's Isha. Isha, happy birthday. I'm free. Enjoy it. Have a good year. <laughs> Thanks so much. We love you. Pleasure, treasure. Thank you. Back to the blue microphone. Where can you find it? There it is. There we are. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, if you could play with any actor that you haven't played with yet, who would it be? Ooh. That's a very good question. Um, who would I like to do something with? I think Paul Dano. Do you know Paul Dano? I really like him. I think he's great. Um, God, I always, it's like, you know when people go, what's your favourite album? And then I get home two hours later and I go, that's my favourite album. I always forget. Um, who would I like to work with? Daniel Day Lewis, but he's not acting at the moment, so he's a goner. Um, Jack Nicholson's my favourite actor, so probably, if I could, I'd, I'd pick him. Also, uh, did you watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. Um, uh, if you could change more, like, um, uh, one, like, at the end, who was, like, the king or the queen, who, who would you have decided? Who would you, who would I make king or queen? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> probably the hound. Yeah. <laughs> I'd make the hand king. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was cool. I liked him. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Pink microphone.
microphone on the right side over there, the far right side. Yes. Ah, hello. 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 Um, I'm conflicted with two questions, so I'm going to let you decide which one I'm going to ask. Fabulous. The one is weird, but still normal. The other okay. one is weird, but really unique. I will let you decide. Okay. Well, I mean, I, want, I, I need to pick first yeah, before I've heard that. Uh, let's go weird and unique. Weird and unique. Your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is something I ask a few women, my friends, and we're debating it a lot. In an episode with Peter Capaldi, you see the master and the assistant, Michelle Gomez, and I forgot the other one's name. Yeah. Apologies. Sasha. Really, Sasha Darwin. Really getting flirty with each other, dancing and things. And I was wondering now, if a time lord or a time lady starts a relationship with himself or herself of a different generation with the incest or self-pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> time Lord and a Time Lady. That same generation but different. Um, what you mean, so essentially if doctors met one another and started a relationship. Like when you met uh, David. David, if I met David and, like and kissed the, 11th, the 10th doctor or yeah. the 9th doctor. No, I just think, well, I think anything goes if you're the doctor, doesn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure there's some sort of timey, wimey way around it. Uh, I you want know. to have yeah. David Dan person that person he crash landed. Really? <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah, no, I think, why not? Each their own. Who cares? If you... It's like kissing yourself, essentially, isn't it? So, it's not that bad, I think. <laughs> Let's just not bring any incest anywhere near... The time <laughs> Okay, let's go back to the blue microphone. Where can I see it over here? Blue microphone, yes, please. And Where are we? Uh, here, first of here on the left side. Left side. Ah, yes. Ah, there you are. Uh, first of all, welcome to Belgium. Thank you very much. We're very proud to have you here. Well, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I was wondering, I think, uh, just like uh, a lot of people here, um, the scene at the end uh, of uh, episode 3 from uh, House of the Dragon, mm. where you don't uh, actually say anything, did it start out uh, like that, or um, did you have any lines? Um, yeah, I think there were lines in it. I mean, that scene went through a lot of different iterations. There was a version of it that I really wanted it to be, um, which it didn't turn out in, in the end. Um, but I think, I can't remember if there are any lines after, um, but after we get off the dragon. I don't think there were, really. I don't think I said very much. Or did I? Am I off? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's really unhelpful, isn't it? No idea. But, um, yeah, it ended up as it did. No, I, yeah, it looked, it looked because, right I, because I think, um, and a lot of people think, it's one of the best scenes. Really? In, uh, in recent years. Uh, oh, so oh, cool. Thanks, man. That's so, it's, so it's, it was, uh, to meet. So, uh, really? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm. One yeah. of the best scenes of recent years. Yeah, I'll take that. Yes. <laughs> Put it on your Instagram. Yes. <laughs> Watch Doctor Who. <laughs> Who's your favourite companion? Um, it, it Amy. Who? Amy. Amy. Amy yeah. Pond. Nice. And yeah, I saw Karen last week. Cool dude. Can I ask another person? No. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, yeah, go on. It's that demon Targaryen voice. You can get anything done from everyone now. Yes. Okay, where is the uh, uh, blue microphone? Over there, yes. Hi. Hi. Temper and so I wanted to know if you have more the temper of Damon Tiger or the temper of the Doctor. Um, don't know really. It's probably well. I'm not as cool as the Doctor. I think I love the Doctor. Do you know what I mean? So I can't claim to be quite like the Doctor. I quite like Damon, to be honest. He's a bit weird, but I quite like him. I don't know. I think in truth, I'm not even. I'm not that close to. I'm probably closer to the Doctor. As a human than I am, even though he's an alien. <laughs> yeah, I think probably. Damon's really moody. <laughs> Thank you, and I have another question if I can. No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. so I wanted to know what is your best memory on the set of the doctor? Because I'm <laughs> Ooh, my best memory. Do you know what was fun? In the second episode, the beach, the, the beast below that we did. Which we filmed really early. They built this like we come out of a whale's tongue in it. Obviously, I'm ruining it for the person that's never watched Doctor Who. <laughs> but we we come out of a whale's tongue. We land in all this like cabbage and muck, basically. They built this huge slide. And me and Candice just got to sort of slide down it. It was right off. That was good. yeah, that was a good day. Work. I'll pick I'll pick that today. Okay. Better than riding a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Next question, we have the pink microphone on the right side somewhere, can I see it? Ah, please? yes, hello. Oh, there you are, yeah. Doctor. Can you speak in the in the black circle, that is the microphone, please speak in there. Yes, ask your question. I don't know, Doctor! <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but, yeah, but yes. <laughs> French and don't speak very well. Oh, but I'm sorry that I don't speak French or Flemish. But you can ask me. Vous pouvez poser votre question en français. J'en suis sûr que quelqu'un peut traduire ici. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, my question is, uh, did you like the ending that you had in the doctor? As the doctor. Um, well, look, um, it's always hard leaving that show because it's such a wonderful part to leave. And part of me, I knew I had to leave, really, but you know, part of you goes, oh, I could stay for a bit. And regenerating is, it's, it's, it's a tough, you know, was it the best episode it could be? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But I thought, I thought Stephen wrote some, you know, some really great stuff, and it was nice. I had Jenna and. And Karen there was the two companions and stuff. So yeah, look, I was I was proud of the body of work up to that point. Um, yeah, but I think everything can always be better. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Blue microphone. Please. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah, you are in the front. Oh hi. Oh hi, honey. Um, this is a weird question, but it's not actually. Anyway, um, what star sign would you say you are but they are. Yeah, well, I'm, awesome. I'm a Scorpio. I think Damon Targaryen is definitely a Scorpio. Do you think? Yeah. Is that being an Aries? Well, he might be. I don't know. Do you think he's more an Aries? Very chaotic, though. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. But he's got a. He can, he's got a kind of sting in his tail. Yeah, that is And I, I, I don't know. I, I think the Doctor is all of the, the star signs, well, all of the planets rolled into one. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Nice one, honey. Thank you. Pink microphone, there. Hi, Matt. Hello. Hello. Greetings from your Ukrainian friends. Ah, oh, greetings back to you, Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how do you think, who would be the better politician in our world, Damon or Doctor? The Doctor. <laughs> well, actually, no, they'd both be terrible, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think, I think as leaders of countries, they, they, they'd both be pretty wayward, I would say. But probably the Doctor, I think Damon would be a tricky old fish. Heads with Thank you. Maybe we can see Damon lead a country sometime in the you fiction. Never know. You never know. You probably can't tell us or they will have to well, kill Yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. It's got a big enough dragon. Okay, blue microphone is right here. Hi. Hello. Uh, what was your favorite speech in Doctor Who? Ooh, good question. I, I think purely because of the time I did it, it was really, really cold. I can't tell you how cold it was. We were up, it was a night shoot, we were on like a mountain in Wales. And um, there's, a, there's a speech at the end of the first season where there's a, he's talking to a load of spaceships. Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah, on Stonehenge. And we got to go to Stonehenge as well, it was really amazing. And, and um, I think there were just a lot of bits in play. But then the, I thought there was a really beautiful one that Stephen wrote in The Rings of Akita as well. Do you know the one I mean? Yep. I thought that was a great bit of writing. So maybe one of those two, but I was lucky to have Stephen Moffat, who was so fabulous at, at writing those great big Shakespearean soliloquies. It was, yeah. What's your favorite? The microphone is gone, but I will come to you, yes. Yeah, I think that's my favorite as well, as well I think. Really, the yeah. one, and then, and then. Yeah, 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 it's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, a uh, big microphone. It's, it's, welcome to Belgium. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have a question about a dragon or a doctor, but one of my favorite movies is uh, Last Night in Soho. Yeah. You're a great actor, but you're even a better dancer. Ah. There's one scene where it's amazing, that scene, the dance sequence. Yeah. I saw the making of. It was like, wow, how did they do that? Yeah. So my question to you is, which one is the better dancer, Anya or Tamsin? <laughs> you guys are tough, aren't you? Um, um, I, well, they're both pretty good, actually. I think I was the weakest. No, I thought they were the best. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I, think, I, think, I think it comes quite naturally to Anya. Um, not to say that, John, you know, that kind of Tom's a bad dancer, because she's not, but I think Anya was sort of born to dance. And it, was, it took like... A lot of time to practice it. A lot of time to practice it, yeah. But I mean, there was such a wonderful filmmaker in Edgar Wright who manages to sort of be such a wizard and, uh, and make it seem like it was these wonderful shape-shifting moments. I always wanted Edgar to direct an episode of Doctor Who. I think he'd be brilliant at it. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, Matt, this is uh, Sven Ritter, famous actor in Belgium and the biggest movie geek of the country, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Any, 
any nerdy movie questions? One person to ask. Really? Oh, Where nice. is the other microphone? The uh, blue microphone. There we are. Yes, a bit higher up. Uh, hi, Matt. Hi. How are you today? I'm really well, thank you. Yeah. Where are you? There you are. Oh God, how could I miss you with that lovely hair? Uh, so my question was, um, what's what? What was the most challenging part of playing um, the Demon Targaryen? The wig. Because I'm not very good at being still. And you, it takes like an hour and a half to put on every morning. And I had to put a ball cap on and all this stuff. And I just thought, oh God, I'll make this way up, make this way up, make this way up. Was, was it like painful or just like... Well, I know they glue it on, and, but it's like wearing like a swimming cap. You know when you go swimming? And they put like a, like a cap on you to get the hair out of the way. And, um, but no, and also physically it was quite challenging. It was a tough shoot physically. There were a lot of stunts and stuff. And that's always quite, but that's, you know, it's good fun, it makes the day pass. And I had to learn to horse ride, and I make horses a bit jittery. You know, some people are good on them, I'm terrible on them. So, yeah, there were, there were a lot of challenges, but they were good. Yeah. I have another question. Go for it. No, so, you can't ask me. <laughs> uh, so I, I saw on YouTube that you did a few interviews with uh, Patty Constein. Yeah. And you two seem to, to get along very well with each other. Yeah. So I was wondering if uh, with some of the cast members you did create friendships or relationships like Emma Darcy or Patty or others. Yeah. Well, outside of work. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm really, really close with a lot of the cast. Uh, Reese Evans is amazing. Fabian Franco, Emma Darcy, Liv Cook. Like, yeah, we, we, we were really blessed on that to have a wonderful, collaborative, kind, fun group of actors. Lots of whom I'm, I'm sure you'll meet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is, is the, the, the wig, is it itchy? Yeah. Really? Hot and itchy, yeah, of course. But look, they look cool, the wigs, and they're Targaryens. You've got to have them, but it's... And it's, it's a good thing that you can be grumpy all the time. So. Yeah, well, exactly. That's yeah. What, yeah, no, it's, quite, it's quite useful, isn't it? Was Damon a light-hearted character until they put a wig on? Is that what happened? Well, who knows? I, mean, <laughs> I think sometimes he can be quite light-hearted. I think he can be. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. That will come in the next episode. Yeah, yeah. Next question. The pink microphone. Where is the pink microphone? Over there. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm sorry because my English is bad. It's better than my Flemish and French. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for your role in The Crown, did you meet Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip? Or did you prepare for the role? No, I mean, I didn't get to meet Philip or the Queen, sadly. I wish I had done. I'd have loved to meet Prince Philip, but I did. I, I, you know, I've met now King Charles, and I met Harry and William briefly, and they were they were very pleasant and um, very polite, and nice. Um, I prepared. I did a lot of research on Philip, and there was a sort of people in England used to have a particular opinion of Philip as being of a bit, you know, you to make social gaffes and this and that. But I found him to be hugely interesting, terribly clever funny actually and uh, I got to learn a lot about England and the royal family from that show that I just had no idea about. Thank you. Thank you. Is it true that, that Harry called you granddad? It is, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he, he was only joking but yeah he did, he was, he was very, very gracious. And the Queen did watch the crown, I heard? I heard, but whether, it, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I couldn't, it's, you know, it's not, I couldn't confirm it, but I heard it. I heard it. You know, someone said she did once per time. And Prince Philip did not? He didn't. How did he react? I Somebody just, asked him, right? Yeah, someone asked him and he was like, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't give a damn. He was too, he was too, he was, he was too cool for school. For too cool for his own character. Damn right. Wonderful, wonderful. The blue microphone, where is it? Over here, yeah. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Uh, my question is also related to uh, the crown. I was wondering if you feel something special when uh, the Duke of Edinburgh or Queen Elizabeth II died because you create like a special bond, like you feel more involved than in other English. Yeah, I did. I mean, I wasn't sort of hugely, before I did that job, I wasn't hugely royalist or particularly in, into the royal family. And then I got that job and I got to learn about the family and particularly about him and her. And, um, I, you know, I got to learn about the love and the bond between them and what they did to it, really. Um, whether you believe in them or not as an institution. Uh, so, 
yeah, I was sad. I was sad for Britain, really. And I think, you know, I, I wonder what's going to happen to the monarchy now that she's gone. She was such a wonderful figurehead. Um, you, you have a royal family here, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you like that? Do you like having a royal family? <laughs> Tricky question, Mr. Smith. <laughs> no? Is that a no? You know this button on Facebook? It's complicated. <laughs> really? That's... It's complicated. Well, they are, aren't they? It's a complicated thing, any monarchy. But, yeah, oh well, I won't go there. Yeah, I, I've met the king once and you get this training, you have to, you have to say sire all the time, sire, you have to address me sire. So I was talking to the king all the time, saying, yes sire, no sire, and wow. I was this close to saying, hey, sire, put my alarm clock on 6.30, and I didn't. Oh, no, sire. Yeah, so oh, yes. I, I constrained myself. <laughs> oh, but that pink microphone, where is the pink microphone? Oh, Hello. Hi, yes. Hiya. Hi. Um, Doctor, but question about House of, the, House of the Dragon. How hard was it in terms of learning Hyvalerian or just the pronunciation? And if you could say anything to us in Hyvalerian as well? In Hyvalerian? Um, oh god. Uh, what, um, to, uh, see, uh, I could get my phone, I could listen to it, so it's a lot, or I could read it. Surtout de Melas, surtout de Melas. It's quite hard to remember Hyvalerian. It's quite, it's quite hard language to learn, actually. I mean, you guys will speak loads of languages. I'm just an ignorant Brit who knows <laughs> So you probably pick it up quicker than me, but it's like a mixture of sort of Latin and Arabic. But can I remember any off the top of my head? Um, de Milo, uh, no, I can't. If it comes to me, I'll say it out loud to you, but yeah. No, but it was good, and I, I sort of had to learn it yeah, like just practice and repeat really. But what was interesting about it from an acting perspective was like, it, like you know when you go abroad with your friend, we well, don't know this, but if I come to sort of France or Belgium or whatever, and then suddenly my friend's like, eh, bonjour, it's like, ah, and you're like, wow, I didn't need to speak French. It sort of reveals this whole other part, and it revealed this whole other bit of Damon Targaryen to me, which I didn't know was there. Just softer, more playful. Thank you. Yes. The blue microphone on this side. Yes, please. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I have another Doctor Who question. So we've seen the Eleven Doctor read different versions of themselves, like with the Tenth Doctor. Uh, is there any uh, version of the Doctor that the Eleven Doctor hasn't met yet, but you would like to? The, um, oh, because me, the other Doctor to me. Yeah, um, I'd like to meet Chris Eccleston's Doctor, the Ninth. Um, I'd like to meet Peter's. You know. Um, I'm really excited about the new Doctor. Yes. I'm really excited. <laughs> Who's excited about the new Doctor? Yeah. I think he's going to be really, really good. He's a great actor. He's got a good spirit about him. And, um, yeah, I think, I think that could be really interesting. So, yeah, I mean, look, I'd love to meet them all because we're all one person, really. What, what makes a good Doctor, do you think? Wow, that's a very good question. I think you've got to be slightly mad to play the doctor. <laughs> Genuinely, I think you've got to have a genuine streak of madness in you. Yeah. Um, um, but well, I don't know. I mean, what makes a good doctor? It's, it's a million things, isn't it? It's down to your taste. And it's who you see first, I think, often. It is. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, some people like Tom Bacon is their favorite, you know? Yeah. Um, For me, it's, quir it's the quirkiness that... Um, really? Yeah. And the quirkiness was really there with you and David Tennant, and yeah. it's gonna come back with the new Doctor, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I look forward to. That's yeah, I mean. no, I think he's gonna be great. Yeah. Good, next question, the pink microphone. Over there. Hello. Hello, man, how are you? Hi, very well, thank you, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, we're brothers, and if I ask a question, if he does, then he's gonna kill me. And if he does, yeah, 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 that's cool. So we got a question for each. Yeah. My question is a bit far from Doctor Who, uh, House of Dragons and stuff. My question is, there have been you know, rumors about you playing in a DC you know, series or a movie like, in future years. Would you ever consider playing the Riddler in any of the DC movies or series? Yeah, but Paul Dano has just done it and he's so good. Um, so I think that, that ship sailed. But it's a great part. I'd, I'd, I'd have loved to have been involved. That's, that's, he's probably, I think Batman's probably my favorite superhero. And if 
you ever had a chance to play with a like within a in, in a Batman movie as a Riddler, which Batman actor would you choose? Oh, that's a great question, Michael Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I loved those Batmans so just because I grew up with those Batmans and they were probably my favourites and then look I think I think the Nolan Batmans are amazing as well but yeah Michael Keaton thank you very much thank you yeah uh, I want to ask about the Game of Thrones world if the demon was like in the time of Game of Thrones uh, what would be his relationship with Jon Snow especially after he killed the last Targaryen well, I don't think Jon Snow would survive very long. <laughs> I think the dragons would come out and Damon would go hunting. I don't know, who knows. Be a, that would be a good face-off though, wouldn't it? Jon Snow and Damon Targaryen. It'd be a good battle. Thank you. And huge loves from Azerbaijan. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Okay, we have time for one more question. Last question, where is the blue yes, microphone? Yes, one more. The blue microphone is over there. Yes, Here we go. Hi, it's an honor to meet you. It's an honor, it's an honor to meet a doctor. Yes. Uh, I'm forced to say this, but it's my sister's birthday. So Happy she's birthday. Here. She's here. I forced her to watch Doctor Who. Yes. <laughs> but I wondered when watching Doctor Who, could a doctor be diagnosed with ADHD? <laughs> probably, yeah. I recognize a lot. So like, yeah. I mean, I probably can. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the doctor could be diagnosed with a lot of things. He's a pretty strange, mad creature. He's got a lot of alien afflictions, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, why not? Why not? Thank you. If he has a heart disease, he has a spare one, so that's no He has problem. a spare one. He can bounce around the tubes. All the other stuff is problematic. So, thank you very much for being here, Matthew. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.